kids playing video games. Dogs sleeping. I did, I showed it. There's stuff standing away on our butterfly hatch. So if you hear all this sanding and stuff and you can't hear the audio, blame her. So what are we working on today? Project day again, we're kind of in full swing here. Um, today's project, we're gonna work on doing a DIY low budget um, fuel polisher. So, there are the kids. Hi. Being rowdy, Dean, Lance. Hi. I think Rose is hiding back there somewhere. <laughs> um, so we're gonna do a DIY fuel polisher. <clears throat> I say DIY because we looked at doing a polisher a while back and um you know they're really expensive they're, i mean they're thousands of dollars to do proper fuel polisher for those who don't know what a fuel polisher does it's basically a system that the fuel from your diesel from your fuel tank will divert from the engine fuel filters and it'll go through a filtration system back to tank it circulates it and it pulls water contaminants all sorts of stuff because diesel fuel gets prone to getting water and, and algae and all sorts of crap you don't want that I'm sure you've seen many channels that they've had fuel issues. It happens quite a bit. Um, so what we're working on today is we're going to do kind of a low budget version. So for anyone that's going to like comment and say this isn't the same as like a high dollar one, it's not. Okay. So, but we just got done cleaning the tanks out, removed all the old fuel, done clean. And so I just want something I can run at the dock here. It's like a pretty, it's low draw. It's basically going to consist of a little electric pump in line um, that I installed as a primer pump if I need to change filters. So I'm gonna hook that up and I'm gonna have a diverter valve that diverts it through just basically a standard Raycor um, and then jumps back in the return line of the engine and comes back. And so what that'll do is if we're sitting at the right dock here. or something, yeah, there's Rose. If we're sitting at the dock or something, we could run this system. And what it's do is it's basically just gonna pull from the pickups of the tank and run it through a filter and separate water and then I I'm basically have like a redundant filter that I'm gonna be dumping out that's not burning up my filters, okay? So again, usually polishers are a multi-filter system. Um, sometimes they use specialized filters. Um, there's all this stuff, but I mean, really what I'm doing is, you know, is I can run this polisher for an hour or two a day while we're at the dock for a couple weeks, you know? And I can put 50 hours of polishing and filling this redundant but filter. Just oh. Uh, of filling this redundant filter versus 50 hours of running, you know, because that's the kind of thing is I'm just going to run it through and anytime we do suck something up or, or bring something in the tank from a crappy fill station or whatever, we're just going to run it through and use these a dub. So it's kind of a, uh, it's probably not, I know it's not as good as some of these complex systems, but the idea is it's a low voltage, 12 volt small pump. So I would, it's something I can run pretty often. Okay. So this is a good alternative for someone who maybe is like, I don't want to spend four grand on this elaborate system. They take up a lot of rooms. If anyone's ever used one, they usually just have these manifold banks and they're just covered. And like, I mean, I've seen guys having written instructions hanging from them and they're quite, quite elaborate. It's more valves to go bad, more lines to replace, all that stuff. I don't want to do any of that. So this is literally going to be two diverter valves and it's going to just turn what's going to go to my engine. It turns it, runs it through a secondary ray core and back to the tanks. And so it'll just kind of be a redundancy, you know I mean? Like it's uh, an extra filter that you run it through versus clogging up my engine filter. So that's what we're gonna do today. I'm gonna show you what I kind of got going on with that. Pretty straightforward. I wasn't gonna do a video of this, honestly, because it wasn't anything super fancy or anything like that. But you know what? It might help someone else that's maybe could use this but doesn't want to buy a full blown polisher system. We don't we don't need it. So here we go, I'll show you what we got. So this is a Raycor as well. It's a fairly traditional style one that we had on here. Um, so this one, if anyone's familiar with these, you have to unscrew, this is your water trap, dirt trap kind of, that it separates you. If you want to change this filter, you got to take the clear thing off, change the O-ring, and then you take this canister filter off, right? And so if you're in like a situation where you got to change it really fast, anyone who's done one knows it's really hard not to make a big mess. The last thing I want is diesel in my village, so you have to have a catch base and all this stuff to do. And uh, it's just, it's kind of cumbersome in a, in a bad situation. So if you are running this and you're not familiar, these Raycors, this is the 500, 
they unscrew from the top and the filter cartridge comes out the top. It still has the glass bowl down here to separate and everything. Um, they're much better filter. They're not cheap, obviously, um, but the cartridge comes out. And so you can pull the cartridge out in a quick change situation. It's a lot nicer. So I switched to that. And then I'm gonna take this old one because I'm cheap. And since it's pretty sufficient for as far as filtration goes, I'm gonna run a two micron on this. If anyone's really knows their filters, this is a 10, but I'm gonna run a two eventually. And I'm gonna mount it on this wall here, up kind of high, which wouldn't be good for an engine mount, but it'll be good for here. And then <clears throat> you can see here, I already mounted this valve. Like I said, I wasn't gonna videotape this, so I already mounted this valve. So this side's my engine, this will be going to the motor, and then this side is going to be to the, ra the sorry, not to the Raycor, uh, to the polisher, basically. So you'll basically get in here, you got your inlet here, you'll decide do you want to run the engine filter or do you want to run, do you want to run it through the secondary filter which is going to be our polisher right and so this will be off position and then what i'm going to do is i have my return line off here that runs back to the tank and i'm going to end up putting another t valve in here so that the polisher will come and take off this way to my tanks so rather than adding a whole bunch of lines and extra valving and all that stuff um then i'm just going to reuse what's on there okay so see if it'll work this is kind of just a, something i came up with um if it doesn't work whatever's worth a shot but at some point it should work something but uh yeah i mean <clears throat> i i'm a marine mechanic for a living if anyone doesn't know that and so i'm very familiar with what a real system is and it's just more complexity that i really want to deal with honestly um some people run them spend a bunch of money run them, never have issues but for me maintenance longevity it's a lot of extra plumbing to run to a system that doesn't need it and I mean, we got this old Lehman here. <laughs> She's pretty stupid and simple. Uh, doesn't need that much. Just need to keep dirt out of the injector. So yeah, so we'll get with that today and uh, see what you guys think, okay? So you guys have questions or if this is something you think about doing, let me know. Um, otherwise, this is the cheapy polisher if someone, anyone's interested. The kids playing video games. Dogs sleeping. I did, I showed it. We're, the boat's a mess right now. We're getting ready to move docks and trying to get all of our projects done before. <clears throat> There's stuff standing away on our butterfly hatch. So if you hear all this sanding and stuff and you can't hear the audio, blame her. That's who, that's her doing. But uh, yeah, we're just tirelessly trying to get these projects done. We're gonna move over to another dock and then finish up these projects. We uh, thought we were gonna be we thought we were going to be off, we had to be off, we have to be off this dock in a week. And so, for anyone following along, and someone else is coming in, taking the spot. So we just figured we are going to be on, we were living off the anchor, and we, um, I, I work down at a marina now, and I was going to put my notice in, and uh, my boss actually found another spot at the marina I work at. So, <clears throat> at the marina I work at, so. Seemed like a good deal too to pass up. So I'm gonna, we're gonna stay a little longer, maybe buy some more foo-foo stuff we were gonna do on the boat. Um, and I'm literally gonna be in walking distance. I mean, we're my, it's at the marina I work at. So I'll be able to like walk up the dock and just go to the shop and work. So it's a pretty cool scenario we don't wanna pass on. So I put this on the dock a couple more months, um, but it's a good thing overall. We can save up more. Um, and like I said, do some projects that we were kind of tr like taking off the list because we just didn't have time or want to spend the money on it so um yeah so we're kind of in disarray if you see me when i'm going around the boat and it's a total mess uh doing projects on a boat is uh a lot of these channels it looks really clean and shit when they do it i don't know if they're doing hyper cleans before but ours doesn't look like that so uh we're just in project mode once we get all these projects done we'll stow everything away but yeah it's kind of chaotic in here now so all right let's get started time to mount some stuff All right, we're gonna mount this guy with the bulkhead. Get it kind of something like that. <laughs> I'm just gonna worry about it nice. Let's see if I can hang this thing. I think that works. I don't know. It's dark as hell on the camera because it's dark in here. Go figure. So, 
for me, a lot of people put filters in like weird spots, which is kind of a pet peeve of mine. Because every time I've ever had to change a filter, it's usually when it's clogged and I let it go too long and yada yada. So, uh, did you mount a filter? Put it in a freaking place so you can reach, man. So yeah, I'm gonna put this here. I'm actually gonna hook a hose to the water dump too and have a, uh, a spot for one gallon jugs too that I can dump water into because it's gonna be brackish mixed diesel water so you can't just dump it in your village. You probably could, I don't know, I don't. But um, So I'm gonna run a hose. They have barbed fittings on the bottom of these so when I do need to dump water, if I ever like come up in the morning before I go to fire the engine, I can just dump a little water into like a gallon jug and once it's full, which would take forever, but once it's finally full, then I can take it and dump it properly. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna run it kind of high so I got room to use it. One thing that should be interesting, I didn't tell Steph that I was going to through drill this <laughs> through the bulkhead. So uh, these twist on, they get stuck and you really gotta freaking put some, put some angst on them to get them off sometimes. And so the better way to do it is to like bolt it through. <laughs> Hopefully she doesn't get mad that I just drilled through her pretty teak bulkhead. <laughs> we'll find out. Whatever. Love you, baby. And so, my drink assistant. Can I have a baby? Can I have a drink? Thank you. Good helper, huh? Can I have a screwdriver? The Phillips one? Thank you. What's a Phillips? That's a Phillips. You know what a Phillips is. Phillips. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, it's my company. My daughter. This is Rosie Rose. You say hi, Rose. There's Dean being a spaz. What'd you do, Dad? Hi. Yeah, that's Dean. Okay, and as you can see, hasn't moved in half hour it's taking me to do this so she's uh the most lazy guard dog in the world so just waiting for pirates i guess i don't know all right guy goofballs okay so this is what i got to work with the valve this is going to be this is again from the tank so the pump will turn on you'll i'll turn this over this will then pump tank fuel dirty tank fuel we're hoping we're not hoping but expecting into the filter it'll filter out and then it's going to come out and then i'm going to tee it into my return line that runs back to the tank all right then you can see here those are the through bolts of the bulkhead so they actually turned out pretty good so and then i'll show you in my trap door here no it's probably a mess in here yeah it is oh, freaking hobbit hole down here and you can see down here, this is the pump I added for my T, and this is the fuel line to the engine. So this is one of those little facet pumps, uh, little fuel pumps. And the reason I use that one is because that one, when it's off, is a pull through. So some pumps, uh, the flow is impeded when it's obviously not being used. So this pump won't be used all the time. So this will be a flow through, and the mechanical pump on the engine will do all the the pulling the fuel through and then um if i change my filters i need to prime them uh, and fill a filter back up so if i clean the main ray core i'll have this on a switch in the engine room where i click it it pumps the fuel up it'll fill my primary or if i valve it over this will be the pump that also runs and does the circulation of that and then also flip side of that is if i prefer mechanical fuel pumps to electric it's a big old age-old debate I don't trust electric fuel pumps if I'm way offshore. I like mechanicals myself. But if the mechanical fails, some reason the diaphragming, the one's brand new on here and I have a spare, so I kill two mechanicals, let's say hypothetically, um, I could switch this pump on and it's sufficient enough to keep up with the engine. So um, it's just an extra, extra, even if I run out of parts or run the engine, this will actually run the engine. So that's kind of a cool little factor. I, I like to, Anyone who follows along with the additions we do to here, anytime I can do double protection on anything or double like a backup 
make make one pump do three things i will because it's like on a boat everything you can plan all you want it's always the one part you never brought at least in my case so being that we're going to do doing longer journeys and being more critical on what i how i set stuff up so that's kind of cool so i'll have a an extra pump for the engine and also a primer pump slash a uh fuel polisher pump so um yeah so that's what that looks like in there so now i'm gonna get some plumbing done and see if it works all right so we got this wired all wired shit we got this all plumbed up so this would be i said before intake so intake comes up and then it'll go back to the tank so i cut my factory return line down here i set my fittings up on here and this will be my t-valve for my return line to the tank so one side will be the um hey yo calm down kids are running them up dude you're still yelling dude you guys can play just quit screaming your neighbors are gonna piss anyway so sorry kids are wild um well three thought now we uh yeah so like i said so this is the drain back to the tank one side will be hooked to the polisher one side will be hooked to the engine so you, there's no situation where i need to be polishing and running the engine at the same time at least in my system so it'll be a t back or forth or off which off would be pretty bad so i'm not gonna do that and then i'm just gonna mount it right here everything's gonna be quick access this is also relatively low voltage is the point it's a 12 volt system it's not something i have to be at the dock to run so once we're living on anchor, I don't want something that's going to be this power sucker, you know. Now the kids are up on deck, probably bugging mom. Oh no, don't. I will say one thing about living on a boat with kids and doing projects is like this side of the engine, I'm in the only bathroom on the boat. And it seems like every time I start a project, everyone on the boat has to go to the bathroom at the same time. So if you see me stop the camera here and there, that's why. That's all you can tell them not to go potty. Oh, no. That sucked. <coughs> Dropping shit. All right, and that's it. So, look at here. Little ha little diesel hack. I'm gonna put a light on actually, so you freaking see. Okay, so that's right there. That's my main valve, and this is the return. So, basically, I know I've gone over this a few times, but bear with me. That comes from the fuel tank, the black line there. Let me set this somewhere, sorry. If someone is trying to actually do this, or if you're just watching for enjoyment, you know, I'm good for sticking around, honestly. But if you're watching this, actually to know how to do it, um, this is from the fuel tank. Now we have two tanks that T and come to this. The pump will push it up, depending on what we're selected at. Arrow points to where it's going. This will be to my engine fuel filter, and then that goes around, comes into my fuel pump. And then when we want to clean the fuel, and then we want to run our polisher. So say we're at the dock just hanging out, the fuel will come up and uh, sorry here, filter come down into here. So we point it to here, then it goes, and this is the main line underneath here, goes back to the tank. So say we're done polishing and the idea is I'll just toss this filter every time it fills up and I see muck start getting up here or whatever, I'll toss and drain this one. And I'll do that every time we're dock or anchored for more than any time. Um, more, you know, if we get a rolly anchorage or we're getting tossed the hell around, that's when um, I've noticed when we get a rolly agent and we're getting tossed around, that's when I notice that, you know, stuff, sediment that gets kicked up. So it'd be nice to, you know, if we're just getting tossed one night, it's a good opportunity to start, wake up in the morning, we have coffee and I'll run this, polish it. And then uh, the goal is to keep the crap out of my main field, which should happen. So I should hit my button here, and this is a momentary now. I'm gonna. This is that's the old switch I reuse, but I'm gonna actually hook it to a switch. We should start filling with fuel. 
Now. There's probably gonna be some dirty shit. Look at that. Dirty shit. Yes. So I told you we just cleaned the tanks. And I blew out some of the lines. We replaced some of the lines too, but there were still T-valves and stuff in there that were dealing with it. And look at this. Look at that. That's why I had it switched to this first. Because it totally just kicked all that shit out. I knew that was going to happen. So that's why we do this thing. So anyone that's like thinking you got your system clean, this is why people spend a bunch of money on polishers. Yeah, it's kind of cool. You can actually freaking see it. Granted, we have a really, really dirty system, so I wouldn't, don't expect this to be everyone's system, but you, I don't know if you can actually see. It's kind of cool. See it? There you go. And now I can just run this. It looks like shit. Look at that. So yeah, so again, if you're going along with this, if you just found this video and you're like, I want a cheap fuel polisher, um, this way to do it. And even naysayers around there, don't care. Um, unless you guys want to sponsor me and buy $4,000 friggin' fuel polisher, this is what I'm running. I got plenty of other shit to do, so. Uh, <laughs> anyways, so you can see it's gonna do its job, you know, so if someone wants to do this and you're not wanting to dive in, this is something totally you can do just with a few small parts. I mean, I think, I mean, I reused this as my, cause this was my original. Um, and it's one I stuck on there a while back when I was first trying to get in the water. I mean, we had a couple days and I just put a new filter on it cause the other one was leaking, the housing was. And so, um, I think this, this was like 170 bucks and it's a bit suitable for sure. I mean, it's a pretty nice filter housing. Uh, it was 170 bucks. I think, um, I bought 20 bucks worth of line, uh, the freaking fuel, switch valves are like I think 80 bucks for both of them I want a good switchable valves I don't want them getting screwed up so they're all brass um, and then the facet style clicker pump that you hear going that was I don't know 40 bucks so do the math if you want um, but I mean it's it's I'm I would say sub 300 I would give or take mm, yeah I would say 300 bucks maybe which seems like a lot but it's really not and uh, um, I'm just gonna carry a crap load of these filters, but yeah, I'm just gonna run this thing around. I'm just gonna keep running it until I put freaking uh, fuel into my actual filter, and uh, yeah, we'll check for leaks, make sure it works. But this is gonna be a definitely a big saver. Um, it won't perform as good as the expensive ones, but to say that you know, 10 percent, like what, 10 percent of the price, I guarantee it'll perform at least three quarters as good. So take it on your own. But there you go. DIY quickie backyard fuel polisher. So we'll see how it works. I'm gonna check leaks and then we're gonna get this thing rocking, get the boat moved over the marina and we're close. So, all right. New systems in place, we can start polishing this week. Um, so we've got one more week and then we're moving over to another marina. Um, we're gonna hang out for a couple more months. We thought we were gonna be off the hook or we thought we were gonna be on the hook in a couple weeks, so we have to be out of this spot. Uh, we actually have our renters moved in, so we're out of the house. Um, for those following along, we keep talking about we gotta deal with the house, back and forth. We're now full-time on the boat. Again, we thought we were gonna be off, just starting our adventure, um, but we got an opportunity we can't pass up, so we're gonna stay on the dock in a really nice spot, walking distance to work, so I'm gonna stay working for a couple more months. Uh, Steph's gonna stay stay on the boat and with the kids and get a few more projects done I'm gonna get a few more projects done and we're thinking It's not ideal, but we're just gonna kick off This winter and so we're probably gonna do some winter Winter sailing living on the hook and you know exploring and stuff So usually we do it summertime. I usually hunker down in the winter So it'll be kind of fun having everything to ourselves and stuff. So uh, Follow along we're pretty close, but we're gonna take another month or two maybe a couple months uh stay at the spot we got just to really get the boat settled up we can get a few more things add-ons we want that's just going to make life a little easier on the hook 
and then when we're feeling good about the boat then we're going to take off and do some offshore sailing uh now we're back and forth trying to decide if we want to go north or south uh, we're basically probably going to stay here stay around here in the first of the year but we're trying to decide do we want to head north to alaska or south to mexico so uh kind of looking we're kind of back and forth on it like obviously mexico clear waters and sunshine cheap beer alaska sounds gorgeous but we're gonna be cold deal that shit so anyways if you have a vote drop it down in the comments below <laughs> we're kind of back and forth it's been kind of a family discussion the last couple couple days and so but either way we're gonna be on the dock a little more but we're gonna be doing the weekend sailing um for those falling along wonder we're gonna get off the dock uh <laughs> we're gonna be off soon so once we're at this new spot we'll probably be off every weekend every other weekend and we're gonna kind of see what we can break we're gonna go out uh we're gonna get some squall season in and we're gonna go out and kind of i'm actually we're gonna drop the kids off go see what this thing can do we want to kind of push it here uh and and i mean if anything's gonna break i want it to do it here i don't want it to do it offshore so yeah we're gonna have some fun this winter um i think most most people are doing summer stuff but we're not most people so we're gonna be doing some cold water stuff and we'll see how that goes so if you're entertained and watching that if you just stumble upon this video uh subscribe follow along um because we're gonna be shifting gears here within weeks i mean we're really getting down to the wire so uh we've got a lot of cool followers a lot of engagement um which is awesome that's what we want you know we did this kind of for fun and we're just enjoying doing it you know we're not trying to impress anyone uh we're just kind of documenting what our day life is and now that we're out of the house we're going to be doing a lot more boat stuff a lot more sailing a lot more exploring and uh yeah so if you want to follow along hit subscribe check us out um but yeah it's just it's been fun so far but <laughs> next week's going to be a lot of work so yeah but that for today that's it i got my polisher in i got clean fuel coming to the engine so she's ready to rock and a couple days we're moving all right later